Well, hello again, and welcome to the re, uh, re-recording, or actually it wasn't a re-recording because the first recording never happened, uh, because a technical glitch, uh, our internet, uh, caused a problem with the live broadcast today. <clears throat> so I apologize for that. Uh, we live way out in the boonies, and our internet is satellite internet. And sometimes it's not always particularly reliable. Uh, so uh, we do what we can. But uh, anyway, because the live lesson didn't work, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, redo it here. Uh, and I'm going to uh, then, uh, rec uh, I'm recording it, obviously, as I, I redo it. And then uh, I will upload that so you can see uh, what uh, the lesson would have been. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you what we're working from. Uh, our painting today is of uh, Black-Eyed Susans, and uh, I, I really enjoy painting these. Uh, we have them all over our property this time of the year, and uh, they have kind of a daisy look, but uh, with yellow petals and a, um, a brownish center. And the leaves are not particularly remarkable. They are they just actually look sort of like fat blades of grass almost. Not a lot of detail to them at all. And then we've got a bunch of grass and other stuff around here. Uh, I'm going for kind of a freeform look with this uh, picture. Uh, not really uh, trying to get a lot of detail. Definitely not looking to be botanically accurate with this one. Uh, I'm more interested in, in the color and the interplay uh, of light and dark and all of that. So, uh, so that's where we're, we're going. I'm not even going to keep the uh, reference image up. In fact, I'm going to close that. And then I forgot to load the image uh, that I did for the original uh, or for the class that was supposed to be live that wasn't live. So let me load that. And that's how it came out in the uh, class that you didn't get to see. And I'm not particularly pleased with this one either. Now, this is about the sixth uh, practice one I've done. And this was supposed to be the live one. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, it, it uh, got a little bit too out of control in the colors. I kind of like some aspects of it, but I, I'm not crazy about it. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to clear that layer and just erase that painting altogether. And then I'm going to turn on my background drawing. And this is all I worked from was just sort of some general flowerish, uh, you know, almost cotton ball type circles with some leafish type uh, shapes around them. Um, and that that's the only drawing that I did. And uh, so we're going to go from that. And I'm going to go to my watercolor uh, brush. And I'm going to use, for starters, I'm going to use a mop brush. And I've got two of those. One is mop, just mop, and then there's mop two. And the difference with mop two is it has a lot more, uh, <clears throat> a lot more water in it. Now I can adjust those myself. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to wet the paper here in just a second. I've got to put on my drawing glove so I don't uh, mess up my uh, my tablet screen here. So I'm going to wet the paper. And remember, I push this button over here that says show wet. And then when I add water to the paper, it turns the paper blue. And that's how I know it's wet. But I'm going to turn that back off because the, the blue color will interfere with the colors as I see them. And I'm going to start with yellow. All of the colors here uh, are taken directly from that photograph uh, that uh, I'm working from. So I'm going to just come in with my mop. Now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to pause the diffusion so that I have a little bit of time to work with here <clears throat> in laying down these colors. Now that's uh, if you're working with with real watercolors, obviously you're not going to have the option of, uh, of pausing uh, your, your diffusion. If you're working on wet paper, uh, the colors are going to bleed, so you have to work really, really quickly. But one advantage of di digital is I can slow that process down just a little bit. And then I'm going to take a kind of a really pale green here, and I'm just going to fill in 
the gaps around those yellow, what will be yellow flowers. I have uh, again done this uh, painting several times, uh, about three, three or four times in practice, and then the live lesson uh, uh, would have been the fifth, and uh, and that of course didn't didn't broadcast. And I wasn't again, I wasn't particularly happy with my results on that, or honestly with any of them. So uh, I'm glad to, from from one uh, perspective, glad to have a little bit more uh, of uh, a chance to. Uh, maybe experiment with some other things. What I'm trying to do uh, is, is use negative space to, uh, to really create a lot of the, the flower effect. Um, and if you're familiar, if you've, if you've watched art class uh, or you've studied art at all, then you know what negative space is. Negative space, with, with positive space, you're drawing the actual object. With negative space, you're drawing the space around the object uh, and at times inside the object. And so uh, what that does is uh, that lets you draw something without drawing it, actually. And it's kind of a cool, uh, cool technique. So I'm... I'm laying down all these colors. Again, if you're working with real watercolors, you can do this really quickly, and they're going to kind of blend. And, uh, you know, you're going to just get what you get. Okay, I'm going to turn on the diffusion. I'm not going to leave it on real long, but I want those colors to blend just a little bit, and I want the edges around here to kind of bleed into one another. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to dry that layer. <laughs> And that's going to stop the diffusion altogether. <clears throat> so this would be when I get my hair dryer out and uh, and do a little drying work. Now I'm going to come in with a darker shade, and I'm just adding some darker values in here. <clears throat> Excuse me, just to kind of direct your eye in a little bit from the corners of the paper, almost like doing like we did the vignette last week but uh with the opposite we're going kind of a, to a dark exterior and uh, we want to just let those come in i am letting this diffuse on its own and then i do have my blender now if i was doing this with regular watercolors what i would be doing right now would be using a uh, a damp brush and just going along the edge of the watercolors to soften them. Here I'm just using a blender brush and it does pretty much the same thing. You want to be careful about how much water you add when you're doing this because uh, it, it can give you blossoms, which they're not necessarily bad, but blossoms are kind of something, it just depends on the artist. Some artists uh, really like them, particularly uh, more modern, uh, younger artists uh, like to use blossoms in their, uh, watercolor blossoms in their art. Um, those of us who are more old school tend not to. I'll let that blend just a bit. <clears throat> and uh, uh, to, just to show you, because I can undo here, uh, Okay, this is what a watercolor blossom would look like if I if I just add a bunch of water in one place. Let's see if it'll work. Okay, there you go. Okay, and this is this is this is what a watercolor blossom looks like. It's kind of a blotch uh, where some of the paint washes away. And uh, and you get some discoloration. Okay, I'm going to stop that. I'm also going to undo because I don't want the blossom. I'm going to take that out. Okay, but that's what a blossom is when I'm when I'm talking about uh, those. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with my blender, and I'm going to try to soften these edges right around the flowers just a little bit. 
Let's kind of turn these more into transitional type colors, going from the green to the yellow. And again, what I'm doing here is, is almost totally different from what I did in the live lesson. So uh, you're getting a different lesson, uh, but uh, if you had watched all five of the practice sessions that I did with this, uh, you would have seen five entirely different drawings. Okay. Now I'm, I think I may come back in there with a little bit more of that yellow in a bit, but I just want to soften these out here. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it is allergy season in North Texas. Well, it's always allergy season in North Texas, but I'm feeling it more today than usual. I've got kind of a lot of stuff in my throat. I'm going back here and I'm just going to add in a little bit more yellow right in there. And then I want to let it diffuse for a second or two. I'm going to dry that, come back to my blender, and then I will soften that out a little bit. That's probably not something you could really do with traditional watercolors. Okay, whoops, I've got my blossom back there again too. So the water is still there, even though, uh, I'm just going to dry that layer, uh, even though the uh, I, I removed the blossom, the, the water is still there. So I'm just going to soften that out. Okay, so now I've just got, <clears throat> basically got my uh, gradients there. Now, next thing I want to do is uh, if you, uh, let me turn this off here. Around each of the flowers, I did some leafy type shapes. And again, I'm not even trying to be botanically accurate here. Uh, I, I just did you know, very generic pointy shapes. And you can see, still see most of them. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in now with a darker green and I'm going to try a couple different brushes to see which works best. But what I want to do, here's a nice shape here. Let me, okay, it's a little bit too dark. So let me turn that opacity down. Let's see what we get. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to undo that and undo that. Get all of these out of here. Okay. So let's uh, just come in. And I'm going to, I know what I did. I, I used a different brush in the other lesson that I liked better. Filbert was what I used. And there is a filbert. Filbert is is kind of a longer brush with uh, the tip tends to uh, be smaller. It's not just a straight flat brush. We got a little bit more water with our filbert here. No. Let's see, I thought I had another filbert, but I'm not seeing him. <clears throat> Philbert, where are you? I don't know where you went. So I guess we're just going to give Philbert more water. And see if that does the trick. Okay. I think it will. Now I'm leaving diffusion on and I'm just going to kind of come in and paint those leafy type shapes. And then fill in a lot of the, the dark area or the lighter area, excuse me. And I'm going to use the, uh, the light green to be my, uh, to be the actual color of the leaves. Okay, now this doesn't diffuse as long as I'm painting on it, so I'm going to take my brush off for just a moment. <clears throat> I'm going to let it diffuse. And I'll come back here again. And again, this is this is very 
much intended to be kind of abstract, not really trying to get a, uh, a true to life look with it. Okay, let's let that diffuse a bit. And I'm gonna come down here, do the same thing. And <clears throat> And I've tried something different uh, on on every every one of these uh, paintings. I'm going to use my blender just to kind of soften, uh, and uh, that's part of the fun of of really doing art is uh, enjoying the process of problem solving. Um, as as I work with the different colors that I have here as I come back in with, <clears throat> let's go back to my watercolor, uh, as, I, as I work with just the different shapes and colors, trying to figure out what is going to look best and what's going to create the effect that I want to create. Uh, it's a lesson in problem solving, and that's really what... Uh, one of the great benefits of, of art is uh, learning to solve problems. You know, how do you draw a face? How do you how do you draw uh, something that that you see? And uh, uh, <clears throat> if you're drawing a building, how do you make that building look true? Um, just you know, whatever you happen to be working on, what's the best way to render it or to create it? And sometimes the best way is to experiment with different approaches. And so that's what I'm doing here with the 2758th version of these flowers, none of which I've been happy with. <laughs> and that's something else, you know, I, I, I hear a lot from parents uh, that, uh, well, my child just doesn't, you know, they, they love to draw, but they're never happy with what, what they draw, or, uh, they're never happy with their work, and, uh, you know, they're never satisfied with it, <clears throat> and I always tell the parents when I hear that, I said, that's the mark of a creative child, uh, because, uh, most creative people always tend to, uh, say, I can do better. Uh, okay, that was, that was good, but I can do better. I want to, I want to make it, I want to make it more real. I want to make it more accurate. I, you know, just, uh, you're always striving to improve, uh, what you're working on. Uh, and that's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because, um, the downside of that is uh, if you're if you're never satisfied with with what you're uh, working on, uh, then it can get very discouraging uh, because you're you know you're never pleased and you you never uh, you know you you just get really frustrated. And uh, if you're if you're a, a a child who likes to paint or an adult who likes to paint and you experience that kind of frustration, what, <clears throat> what I like to tell you is, you know, you need a balance of both. The, being not satisfied with your work is a good thing because it always pushes you to excellence. Uh, it pushes you to try harder, to learn, to come up with uh, other, again, solutions uh, to what you're trying to do. It pushes you to practice uh, and to um, experiment with different uh, different things, and uh, so uh, so it's actually good to not be satisfied. But the other side of that is that lack of satisfaction can also paralyze you 
as an artist because you're you're so afraid uh, or you can become so afraid of uh, making a mistake. Oh, my window is gone. There it is. Uh, you can become so afraid of making a mistake that um, you're not satisfied with anything and you quit trying and you don't want to do that either. Uh, so, okay, so we've got this. I'm going to dry this layer, make sure all of that paint is dry. <clears throat> kind of hard, uh, funny describing that as, as paint when it's really just pixels, but uh, still. Uh, okay, now I'm going to come in and I know these she shapes do not look like leaves. Uh, and if I were going to keep this or make this video longer than a half hour, then I would be going in and shaping these a whole lot more carefully than I am right now. I'm just trying to give you a feel for uh, how I would do this. I'm going to come now with my yellow. And that's where I wanted my filbert too, because I want the filbert to yeah give me nice petal like a nice petal like feel. I want to make those bigger. I'm going to let that diffuse just a bit, and then I'm going to dry that. That was the mistake I made with the other, as I I did not dry the uh, petals, and they, they kind of just all melted on me, and they didn't look like petals. So I'm just going in a circle like this, and I'm going to let that blend for just a second. And then I'm going to actually not pause the diffusion, I'm going to dry the layer. <clears throat> and I come down here and do the same thing with each one. And let it diffuse for a few seconds and then dry the layer. <clears throat> and Diffuse and then dry. And just keep repeating that process till I get to the bottom of the paper. One more. Okay. Now I'm going to put the little brown center parts in. I do not know the technical term for that. Be good for a, a homeschool uh, Lesson in science or botany is uh, what are those things called? I know that there is a term for them. I'm going to come in with a little bit darker. Let those diffuse a little bit, but and I'm going to dry it. That one kind of got carried away there. And darken him back up again. I'm going to come over now to my yellow again, but I'm going to move it kind of more of an orange, and I'm going to make sure it is transparent. I'm going to overlay or glaze those yellow petals with this transparent orange. 
I'm going to pause that diffusion so I can do all of these before before I let them blend for a second. Make this a little bit bigger. And just keep layering upon layers. I am going to do a physical version of this. I, I don't have it ready today, <clears throat> but um, the live lessons are going to be taking a vacation in uh, August and September uh, because I have some. Uh, we, we're going to be reworking the See the Light website, and I need to devote my attention to that. So that's uh, going to take a lot of my time uh, in uh, in August and September. So, okay, I'm going to turn on the diffusion for just a few seconds, and then I'm going to dry the layer. Okay, so <clears throat> now, so anyway, um, I'm... I'm actually behind two videos now because I wasn't able to get uh, one done uh, for last week. Uh, so what I want to do here is get my liner. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, um, I will record the physical versions, the real watercolors and uh, versions of this. Let's make that a little bigger. And then uh, I will post those as uh, alternatives to the uh, live lesson for a while. And there'll be other things that I'm going to post during that time. But okay, so let's just add some other color in here. I'm going to make these opaque so that they will show a little bit more color. <clears throat> if you want to do this with watercolors, then you would need to get gouache or acrylic. And then I'm going to come in here. Oops, I keep forgetting. I got to dry my layers or my water all goes everywhere. I'm going to add a little bit more shading to here. Try that. Try that. Bright yellow. Let's make that opaque. Just add a few little highlights here and there. And the idea with this picture is to go fast, just kind of enjoy the process. Don't worry too much about the detail. Have some fun with it. But I would be more careful if I were planning to take this or take some more time with this. Okay, that is uh, our uh, pseudo live lesson today. That's what you would have seen if the live lesson had, uh, had actually worked. And uh, I hope that you We'll try some things with this, uh, experiment a little bit, see what uh, what you can come up with, and uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, and remember, uh, keep drawing and always have fun. I'm Jim Pence with See the Light, and and uh, we'll have a a real live lesson next week. 
Thanks for watching.